Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez with Michael Fernandez Ministry. Today, before we get in, we're interviewing with this awesome guest, Brother David. Hallelujah. Member from Lakewood Church. I've known him for a while. Praise be to God. Before we do, let's pray for the peace of Israel. Yeah. Father, right now, you know the chaos they're going through, Father. I pray for the peace of Israel. In the name of Jesus, bless and protect them, Father. And Father, we pray for our president, God. I know no matter what, a Democrat or Republican, you require us to pray for our leaders, Father. Right, right. Father, we pray for our leaders, Father. You know what you're doing, God. And you are able to complete what you want to do. In the name of Jesus, bless, protect them, give them wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we pray for all the victims of these riots, Father. Help them, mm -hmm. Father. Help them. And Father, help those issues with the police. Give them wisdom how to treat people. Father, not all the cops are bad, Father. But those who are good, God, that protect them from the bad. And expose the evil, Father. In Jesus' name, protect the community, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah! This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. We have an awesome guest, Brother David. Hey, Hallelujah. Brother Roddy, man. Thank you for having me. Praise I'm God. I'm excited to be here. I just uh, just tickled to death to be Praise here with you. Praise the Lord. Praise this the is Lord. the second or third time I've been on a show of yeah. yours. And, yes, uh, yes. When I first came to Houston, it was you I was running with because you <laughs> were doing events. And then yes. I just followed up on your lead. <laughs> and do it now, and it's just grown and blossomed. Yes. So. You know, I, at that time, I was real peppy and Lakewood singers and doing this and right. that. I was the godfather of the tables and the uh, restaurant, make sure the restaurants had all the tables ready. Right. I loved it. But then things change, you know. Right. You go to a different level, and I'm still got real busy in ministry. And there goes Brother David took over. And he's doing a great job, and I recommend get involved with Brother David. Yeah, Friends, man. Well, tell us something, you. the things you're doing right now. And uh, to my understanding, you started a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, it's, uh, I was part of Lakewood Church and, uh, you know, leading the singles and had started a life group, which you've came several yeah. times. Yes. And... Uh, the life group got big and then we were doing a lot of events and then it was suggested we start our own a uh, nonprofit uh -huh. where uh, all of the what we do falls under that so we've done that it's called a rise in distinction Praise the Lord. and uh, really excited about that is a Texas based nonprofit we have three initiatives one we want to create events uh, uh, our mission on that is to create space for wholesome, clean connections where we honor God and respect each That's other. That's good. We have a big event this Friday night in Galveston on the beach, uh, sunset service on the beach. You've been a uh, yes. part of a few of those yes, in the yes. past. So yes. we have that going on. Uh, we are about to launch conversational English as a second language, uh -huh. looking to sign a lease on some property down 59 South to set up operations. We're very excited about that. And the third phase I've not told you about is the medical wellness classes. Those that are suffering from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, or whatever, yes. we're going to provide a workshop where they can come in on like Tuesday night or Thursday night coach them up on the diet, what to stay away from, right. exercises, and, and really be a support group to help them be healthy and move their life forward. So, what about mental health? Um, you planning to get involved in that? Well, time? that's not on the, on, the, on the list right now. No. Um, uh, there's a lot of internal discussions that we have about our society's social injustice and all the extremes that are out there right um we talked about it last night in our group mm -hmm. and our topic last night was a rise in distinction how do we arise in distinction what we discovered is that you know let's be less offendable let's not be so offended right uh, the word tells us that in the latter days the offense of many will grow yes. and then the love of many will grow cold yes. so we're kind of starting to see that and how do we be of distinction is to rise above that and 
try to listen and understand and dialogue. You know, I don't have all the answers, but we know the one that does have all the answers. Yes. And so uh, that's what we do as a group. Uh, as you well know, my story is one where I have had a self-inflicted gunshot wound, literally died, and so I know about depression and I know about, you know, feeling very bad about yourself yes. and all that. And uh, I do know how, you know, what I've done to overcome that. Oh, praise God. I have your recording on my website, your testimony, and I will send it to you so you can send it to your people, the people who follow you in the Bible studies, because your testimony is awesome, because a lot of people out there, they don't know how to deal with certain situations and get emotional, and then they take life, take their lives, and rather than doing that, they should reach out for help. You know, right? Because their life does mean something to them, to God, and, right. and to the church, and to their friends. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to send it to you so you could share it with your, because your testimony was awesome, and and I think people out there listening, you know, if you need help, reach out to the church, reach out to me or to Brother David, and right. and he will minister or get someone uh, who yeah. will pray with you and. And agree with you. Don't well, give one up. Of, one of the things I see is is that the enemy likes to put us in isolation. And yes. We make sometimes make poor decisions in those isolated moments. That's what I did. Yes. Not really unpacking my problems, they become overwhelming, and you look for a, a easy way out. Right. So I understand that. That's why I'm a big believer in community. Mm. <clears throat> there is a. Uh, article that came out recently that basically states that you will never be at your to be at your best you need to be plugged into a healthy group uh, yes. to, to maximize who you are yes and yes so, yes what uh, can I have a question I don't remember exactly what drawed you to that point of tempting to hurt yourself was it because of marriage divorce or financial no for me it was just addiction I was just I I hated me I hate I couldn't stop I couldn't stop and I didn't want to live like that I yes. would parallel it to somebody who's you know on a ventilator or something like that you know right. don't resuscitate I don't want to live like this and so that was the, the situation that brought me to that point uh, I do recall when I shot myself I changed my mind, you know, yeah. I crawled to the phone, I pulled the phone off the wall and I was called 911 and I was talking to them and I, I wasn't communicating well with them. I was getting weak. And then I said my first honest prayer, God help me. It was just that simple. Yes. And I felt his peace come in at that point. I felt him say that Praise you're going to go through Lord. some things, but you're going to be okay. Praise the and Lord. And so that was kind of the start of my transition. Praise uh, the Lord. They uh, flew me to the hospital. The, you know, I had a pastor come because uh, I had went to a church two weeks prior or two months prior because I knew I had a God-sized problem. It right. just, I didn't, nobody preached that to me, but I just knew yes. that I needed God because it was bigger than um, you know, what I could deal with. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think that's probably one reason why I uh, uh, spend a lot of attention on new people that come into the church, that come into the group. I'm big on creating space for people to get connected, get plugged in, right. come on in, be a part of something great. Right. I esteem my, my, my group, my following to be welcoming. If we don't manage the food table well, make sure that you welcome people, right. that's critical. Because I went to that church and they were busy doing church, you know, and they weren't. Um, Reaching out to the community. Yeah, yeah, and so two, two months later, I'm, 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 you know, I literally was clinically dead in the hospital. Mm. And um, I had shot myself point blank range. It severed the subclavian artery, a mm. lot of internal bleeding. Mm. Um, I actually shared this years ago on TBN and they were playing it on a loop, mm -hmm. but this testimony, but 
I was on the gurney in the operating room mm. and I literally drifted out of my body and I was up in the corner mm. of the room Crazy. looking down. I know that seems no, odd. That that's just awesome. my experience. But that's, you know. that's a personal godly experience yeah. God let you see. Yeah, I think that today I look now that we're not just flesh and blood. We're spirit. There is yes. a spirit man within us. And I remember being up looking and I could see them working on me and I could hear the comments and all that. And then I, uh, they ended up shocking me and then I, I kind of went out. But uh, wow. I do remember that. Uh, people asked me, did you see a great light? Well, I didn't see a great light. All I saw was darkness, but I wasn't saved at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The preacher came and shared the gospel with me and I didn't really even understand what he was talking mm. about. And I think, I think we need to be sensitive to people that are yeah. coming to church for the yes. first time or coming in. They don't get the vernacular that we're talking mm. about. Uh, mm. I was talking, somebody had came in and we were talking about the, the sacraments of the, uh, the you know, sacrament. the remembrance of, of, of Jesus, yes. you know, drink Seven. the blood and yes. this Seven. is my yes. flesh. And they're like, Man, this is weird. You're drinking blood and eating flat. You know, it was kind of unusual. You know, I'm not all due you're respect. Not, you know, not a good and so you know, try. You know, for me, yeah. it's try not to be so churchy. Just love people, wow. even during this time of social unrest and all that. The mission is still the same. His word has not changed. Amen. Love God, love people, and then I emphasize to my group the third is love yourself, take yeah. care of yourself, keep your heart clean, keep, right. you know, that way you're in a position to be strong and right. be healthy for others. So. Amen. I could relate to that with the suicide when, when my issue, because I didn't know how to deal with the, the demon of transgender homosexuality, and I tried to commit suicide. And as I would, took those pills, Jesus spoke to me. And as I was falling down, I said, Jesus, forgive me. I'd rather be dead than continue living this way. And he said that he was going to let me live. And, and, and there are people out there right now. It might not be the situation like mine or yours, whatever. Your husband or your wife left or a child left and you feel lonely or and you want to take life on your own hand. Don't. Your, your life is precious. Jesus loves you. Reach out. Reach out and God will help you. Yes, yes, yes. Can you Amen. tell them how to get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, I have got a, a website. It's called AriseHouston.tv. Uh, that is our website for the work that we're doing and all that. It lists yes. the initiatives that we have. So that's way. And I see it there on the screen. There's yes. an email and my phone number. Uh, love to hear from you and, and all that. Uh, excited about what God is doing, even in this pandemic time. You know, Praise furloughed God. from my job. But I use that time to strengthen the um, Arise and Distinction company, that uh, a corporate nonprofit that I've started, yes. to strengthen it, write the bylaws, write the initiatives, uh, apply for grants and, and all that. So it's even though it looks like we're, no, it's been a time of flourishing, uh, receiving new donations and new donors, more people coming in. So God is in the mix. Uh, when Praise we were talking Lord. before the show, before he, before us, he sets an open door. So we got to be looking for that open door. This Amen. is a setup Praise to the Lord. move forward. I'm, I'm like, just like our telling pastors, you. Yeah. Like your pastor says, give me one year and we'll work with you. Yes. We get your turn yes. out. We get you get outside yes. and about life. And, and just because your husband that I'll go left you, hey, there's someone better. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tell yes. us about the event you're fixing to have. Uh, we're having an uh, event on the beach, a sunset uh, service on the beach in Galveston at 2501 Seawall Boulevard. It's right next to the pier across from the Chick-fil-A. Very excited about that. Got Russell Norris coming to speak and uh, Victoria is, Romero is going to come and sing. She's from, they're both from, from Lakewood and Praise all that and probably have some others and I'm going to share some thoughts uh, there. Um, I believe that our, what we need to do as a people be, is to become the best version of ourselves. Uh, to grow in God and become the best you. Amen. And we do that physically, spiritually, financially, in all aspects of our life. 
you know, being Amen. in Lakewood, Dr. Yes. Paul yes. sometimes shares with the leaders about the stool, you know, the, mm. to take care of ourselves physically, spiritually, financially, in all areas, and then you're Balance. stronger, you're stable. Yes, especially um, right now with the chaos going on, we need to stand up and be the soldiers, and the kingdom of God take it by force. Right. To be there uh, and uh, to help the community. And I don't care if you're a murderer, rapist, whatever you were in the past, that's under the blood. Yes. That's your past. Don't let the devil condemn you or other people. Stand up in the righteousness of who you are. You're more than a conqueror and you're the light of the world, salt of the earth. Praise God. What you, I'm re ask you once again, this, uh, this 4th of July, 2020, right? Right. The reason why I'm repeating that because if this program comes on in 2021 and repeat it on Facebook, whatever, they're going to think <laughs> it's going to be again at that date. So that's the reason why it's your 2020, July the... July the 3rd. Friday uh, night, July 3rd, Friday 2020, night. yeah. Yes. And I'll be there in spirit, brother. You Thank can see you. me Thank flying you, around there because, you know, a lot of people used to invite me to Galveston and to come in. I says, I'll be there in spirit, brother. I fly because I hate the sun and the beach. I'm sorry. Well, it's going mean, to be. It's going to be. Everyone's to his own, but yeah. to me, I... I I, I just, I'd rather I be in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fine. And, and people nowadays are, too hot and I respect me. people. If they yeah. don't feel like they should come because yeah. of the social, yeah. you mean, I get that. No, I it's just the, for me, it's the heat. Too. Yeah, yeah. So I'll well, come, and, uh, but uh, it's just that I just don't, right now, I stay in the air conditioning. Right, place. right, right. <laughs> well, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the, the people that are in the group. It's, it's not just me. I'm, yeah, I'm the face and the founder but it is a, a, a lot of people in the group that are making a difference. Uh, we uh, gave away a car. Well, we didn't totally give it away, but we provided a car to a single mom oh, that's uh, good. with small kids. And then the women in the group surrounded her and was loving on her and Praise all that. And we've got some guys coming up. We're just trying to love people in our space. You know, that's what we can do. You right, know, I might right. not be able to solve the world's problems, man i can help you i can help this you know and and so that's what we're about you know praise the um, lord and we got about a few minutes and to my understanding you did worked in men's ministry and mission ministry in lakewood you did a lot of things yeah and, and just in a few words because we just have about seven minutes left yeah you can share with us what you basically well do. i love the men's ministry there uh brian cody heads it up with alvaro espa i don't even know how to say his last name uh -huh. alvaro and then harrison uh we are always out in the community doing things like you know, uh, redoing a roof on a house, or maybe somebody's fence fell down, or uh, in the, when Harvey hit Houston, we were working a lot on, you yes. know, rebuilding homes <clears throat> and yes. all that, a lot of behind the scenes things. So it's really a pleasure to be involved with that. I then worked with the missions department, yes. headed up by Gisela Vargas and, um, that was amazing. You know, a lot of blood drives because there's some yes. there's some organization that goes on with that. Very excited to be about that. I think they probably got another one. Did you know? You know that the blood drive at Lakewood yes. is the largest blood drive in North America. That is go, unbelievable. Go go Lakewood. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just Mama's Doty's yes, initiative, and it's carried out through the yeah. missions department, and yes. so. It has been a life-changing experience being a part of Lakewood and serving like that. Yes. Let me tell you a story. I got about a minute and 12 seconds mm -hmm. left, but uh, I was serving like crazy, mm -hmm. like every weekend, you know, many nights out serving, doing stuff at the church, you know, and or no, maybe not at the church, out in the community. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why am I doing all this? I got a daughter that needs to go to college. I don't have any funds to take care of her on that. I don't know what I'm gonna tell her. And then it was February of last year, she calls me and said, Daddy, you're not gonna believe it. I went to the mailbox and I just got a full ride scholarship to Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. That is $42,000 a year. And it hit me. When you take care of God's business, 
He will take care of your business. And Hallelujah. I am a living <laughs> testimony. As, as, long, as you are, are, as long as you are Praise purposed God. to make somebody else's life better, God will take care of you. Hey, man, I'm telling that's you. That's something to run around the house. Praise man, the Lord. Man, I'm about to jump Ooh, out of the chair. Doggy. Come on, Here's brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Do the Holy Ghost dance, brother. Woo. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for you. our church, our pastor, and and bless our pastor, Lord, yes. and our and, and Lakewood and the members and all those people who are just doing. Don't think God doesn't see your volunteer work. Amen. Look what God did for Brother Dave. Get busy taking care of God's family. God will get busy taking care of your Amen. family. Amen. I'm a living testament. Hallelujah. That. that is beautiful. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Get me excited, brother. Because I feel the Holy because Oh, my God. Oh, brother. Hallelujah. God has blessed you. Thank yeah, you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother. Man, God. I just love you, man. It really started from you. When I first got to Houston, I took the job with the toll road. I stumbled into Lakewood mm -hmm. on a Saturday night. And I heard criticisms about the pastor, and I didn't know anything about it. And I was just blown away by what I saw, what I heard. And it was a fresh start in God. It oh, was just yes. make this walk with you new and fresh. And that's what happened. And then I connected with you yes. through the singles and then the Friday night events and all that that you do. Yes. And uh, Thank God for Brother John Bohm and Brother Robert golly, Ortiz yes. and Sister Fernanda Freeman. They're awesome. They're yes. awesome. They're influenced in my life. They're awesome. Our church, Steve Austin. Oh, yes. I love my church. Yes, yes. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people there. And, and they love everybody. It's such yeah. a cross-section of people yes. there. It doesn't matter where you come or what you've done. And you know, that just says that there is nothing yes. you've done that God's grace cannot oh, yes. absolve. Uh, there's not a sin too big. There's, not, there's nothing you've done. Um, His grace is sufficient. I love my church. I promise church. you. I'm, you know, I love my church. I grew up in 1972. Came back in 94. And our church was always there and encouraging. And John was, Joe seen, I ran into him years ago by accident. Said, Where have you been, Fernandez? I ain't seen that. Where's Joey? Where's Oscar? Because we grew up in the church together as kids in 1972. Yeah. And it, it, when he says, and he bragged on me to his security. I said, that's my little evangelism, my father. And I said, Joe, I'm not little, but you're great. <laughs> he don't let, he, Joe does not let you say nothing negative about yourself. Right, right. He'll correct you real quick, but yeah. he, he, he affirms you. He encourages you. Yeah. You fall down. You devil, no good for nothing. No, come on, brother, get up. Yeah. You're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Greater is he. So what, you fall? Let's repent. Get up. I Let's know. go forward. Put on the armor and tell the devil he's a liar. Yeah. No matter what you did, past, God loves you. Yeah. Stand up. Yes. So that's why I love my pastor. Yeah, I do too. It it's, it's made a difference. Yes. In me. Most people are beaten down by their oh, own yeah. thoughts and their own yes. misdeeds and all that. And, you know, he always says, don't be against yourself, yes. you know, because God's for you. Be for you, you know. Yes. So, you know, that's what I've done. They always say, they always try to talk bad about our pastor. But our pastor, oh, he's discriminated. So let me tell you, he don't discriminate. He don't discriminate sinners. He loves all sinners. And I was the biggest devil, prostitute, homosexual, pervert. But God set me free. And our church loved us and encouraged us. And that's why I'm at now, because they believed in me and trusted, and lifted me up in prayer. And that's Amen. how Brother Dave is doing with those who go with him in the meetings. Yeah. Encouraging you. You can do all things what God has called you to do. Look at me. I was evil, but God brought me out of the filth. Amen. Amen. Oh, he caught out of my son. Well, before we go, let's pray for the... Those who like to accept Jesus. Amen. If you have not accepted Jesus, say, Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be the Lord of my and life. be the Lord of my life. I confess Jesus. I confess you, Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're sick, lay hands on your body 
and receive ye the healing that Jesus already did at the cross. Be ye healed in Jesus' in name. Jesus By name. the stripes of Jesus, you're healed Amen. and whole. Praise God. God bless y'all. And tune in next week. And we have Facebook and on TV also. Right. 5.75. And Brother Dave. Thank you, thank so, you so much for having me. Yes, God bless brother. you. I love you, Praise, brother. Yes. <laughs> Look forward to doing this again. Yes, yes, yes. Bye, y'all, right. and TV, Facebook land. Bye, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.